Well, we are continuing the studies of the I am's of Jesus, and we are, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I may have mentioned this last week. If I did, I'm going to mention it again. Jesus said, I am come that you might, that they may have life. You could take that personally. I have come that I might have life, or we may have life. Life is that that's of him. That's what we have to hear is it's not just that it's us living. (laughs) It's him living in us and us finding our lives in him. That to me is life. And and we'll get to that, I believe, in these sharings. This has been just a great study in the Lord, a great time in the Lord for me. And then I am the resurrection and the life. Now we were looking at, I am the way, the truth and the life, but I want to mention that I am come that they may have life. I am the resurrection and the life. So I want to just put that before us to consider, to think upon, to dwell upon. And back in John 14, Uh, We read here last week, we'll probably read here this week and next week, probably, before we, we'll probably read here for some time because we're dealing with the way. And, And it's in my intentions to deal with the way, then deal with the truth, and then deal with the life. And as we do that, the way, the way, let us, let us consider the way. He is the way. In 14.1, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how knowest we the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So there's no coming to the Father but by him. I want us to hear this. I want us to really hear this. This this was just in my heart today, maybe last night, as I was considering it before the Lord, how that Aaron's sons approached God. It's it's recorded in Leviticus 10. It says, now Aaron's sons, Nabat, Nadab, and Abihu each took his censer, put fire in it, and laid incense on it. And they offered unholy fire before the Lord, such as he had not commanded them. And fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord meant when he said, Through those who are near me, I will show myself holy, and before all the people, I will be glorified. So just to point out here, Aaron's sons approached God another way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, Jesus doesn't just bring us to God. He brings us to God in himself. That's what I want us to gather our hearts up unto, that our approach to God, I know we receive the Lord Jesus. We receive him. That's how we start our journey with God is we receive Christ Jesus, our Lord, into our hearts. We believe on him. We receive him. But we approach God, the divine presence of God in Christ Jesus. And I'm concerned that very few members of the body of Christ really understand that. 
that we don't approach God, approach God in ourselves. Jesus just didn't come and give us access to God in ourselves. He didn't do that. He gives us access to God, but the access of God that we have is in Christ Jesus. And we're going to look at some scriptures today in regards to being in Christ Jesus. See, that's the way unto the Father is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's how we come to the divine presence. We come there in him. In John 14, where we read, Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you, and that I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. We, many of us, believe what that means is someday Jesus is going to come back and get us and take us to God. Now, that's what I grew up believing. Consider this. He received us into himself by the Spirit of God. I will come again and receive you unto myself. We talked about this last week, that where I am, there, you may be also, verse 11 and 12, Jesus says to them, believe, it, believe me that I am in the Father. Where I am, he says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. So he says that he's in the Father, and the Father is in him. And he says that we are to believe that. That he's in the Father and the Father is in him. Now, to get a hold of this, I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And, and if you read all of John 14, he says in verse 20, at that day, speaking of that day of the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God comes, you're going to understand, you're going to know that Jesus is in the Father. We are in him, and he is in us. We're going to know by the Spirit of God that he's received us to himself. That's how we come to God. We don't come to God as us. We come to God in Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There's so much I want to say here, but I really want to bring this in a clarity by the Spirit of God that we can receive it, understand it, and dwell in it. In Galatians 2, Galatians 2, Apostle Paul writes, For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ lives, or liveth, lives in me. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So here, 
Paul sets forth that he lives under God, but it's not him that liveth. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Our approach to God is not through ourselves. Our coming to the Father is not through ourselves. I wrote a note here as I was preparing for this. I want to share it with you. I, I wrote, I want us to pay particular attention to the but by me. That's in John 14. No man cometh but by me. In him we approach God. Hallelujah. Not in ourselves, but in him. He came out of God and went back into God. This is the way. This is the highway called holiness, not by our strength, not by our own ability. By grace we have been saved. It is the gift of God. Where I am, or excuse me, the gift of God is a person. We receive him, a person, Christ Jesus the Lord by faith. We but comprehend him by faith. That is how we walk here by faith as God reveals his son in us. Glory to God. Where I am, there you may be also that as he is. We see what he is. The fruit of him remains in us. That we begin to abide in that that he is. And we approach the father in him and not in ourselves. Because he came out of God. That's what he says in John 16. That he came out from the Father. And he come into the world. And again he leaves the world and goes back unto the Father. And this is so powerful to get a hold of. Because in John 14 he says, I am in the Father and the Father's in me. Believe me, I am in the Father and the Father's in me. And then in verse 20, he shows a picture that through his work, through the work he did in his death, burial, and resurrection, at that day of the Spirit, we're going to understand that he's in the Father. He came out of God. He went back into God. But he didn't go back alone. He brought us into God with it. When we receive Christ Jesus the Lord, we come into him. That's what salvation is, is coming into Christ Jesus the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the living God. Now Christ is in us and we are in Christ. Now our minds most of the time, do not regard being in Christ. We, If you've read your Bible, you've read it because Paul writes it throughout his epistles that you are in Christ Jesus the Lord. See, that's how you come unto God, in Christ Jesus the Lord. And Paul writes that in the Word, many places in the Word. In Romans 6, and I'm going to read out of the, I believe it's the Young's Literal Translation, but anyway, Romans 6, and we'll read the first 11 verses, says, What then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Let it not be. We who died to sin, how shall we still live in it? Are you ignorant that we, as many as were baptized to Christ Jesus, to his death were baptized, were baptized to his death. We were buried together, then with him through the baptism to death, that even as Christ was raised up out of the dead through the glory of the Father, so also we in newness of life may walk. So Christ was raised out from the dead by God's glory, that we might walk in newness of life. That's how we walk in newness of life. By the Spirit, we're baptized into his death. He reconciled us. He says 
in John, if I be lifted up from there, if I will draw all men unto myself. And he says, this is what this, he was signifying of the way he should die. So he reconciled us into his death. And we are planted into his death. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That's how the writer, that's how Paul writes, we are dead to sin because we're baptized into his death and Jesus died to sin. He didn't die in sin. See, see, we were dead in sin. Jesus came in the form of man and died to the man, put him to death. And so we were baptized into his death in order that we would come forth in the life of Christ Jesus the Lord. And that's how we come to the Father, in the life of Christ Jesus the Lord, not in our own lives. We come forth in the Son of God. Hallelujah. For if we become planted together to the likeness of his death, so also we shall be of the rising again. This is speaking of him. We'll be as his rising from the dead, the rising again of Christ. This knowing that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of the sin may be made useless for our no longer serving the sin. For he who hath died hath been set free from sin, and we died with Christ. We believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised up from the dead, doth no more die. Death over him hath no more lordship or dominion, the King James says. For in that he died to the sin, he died once. And in that he liveth, he liveth unto God so also ye reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to the sin and living to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. And I looked this word up. The Young's Literal Translation translates it in. It is the word in. And this word in is a really big deal in Jesus Christ, the Lord. So we come, we are living unto God in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Our life unto God is in Jesus Christ, the Lord. So we as Christians have to comprehend our life as the way he brings us to God. The way he doesn't just deal with the death side of it, which it does. It deals with the life side of it. We as believers have to comprehend him in whom we live. Not I that lives, but Christ living in me. Now, as a Christian, I have to get a hold of that. I can read these words. I can quote this word, but I have to understand it, and I have to walk in it. I have to get the reality of it in my soul, in my heart. So in him, in him. This word in said means properly in, inside, within. So we are inside of him. We're within him. And it goes on, it means in the realm, sphere, sphere of, as in the condition, state in which something operates from the inside. A primary preposition denoting fixed position in place, time, or state. 
So our position in place, time, and state of being is in Christ Jesus. That's what God has done. That's the mystery of our salvation. It's not only that Jesus died for my sins. He did. He did. He did. I believe that with all my heart. But he brought me to himself. That's what the Holy Ghost did. When I was born again, I was received unto the Lord himself. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I was born of his seed. We are birthed, if I could say it, into him. Now, being in him, we come to know him. In our hearts and minds, we become to know what he is how he is, who he is. This is salvation. This is being in Christ Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter, well, I believe I want chapter 12. In verse 12. For even as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of the one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For also in one spirit, we all are baptized into one body. And we've, we just read that in Romans 6. We're baptized into his body into death we by one spirit are baptized into death so as he died to the world we became dead to the world so whether we're Jews or Greeks when we receive Christ, when, when the Spirit of God begins to make Christ real in our hearts. Now, this happens, I believe, when we receive him. But the Spirit of God begins to reveal this in us, and we begin to understand that, that we were baptized into his death. And Jesus died to the old man. The old man was crucified with him. So we begin to comprehend that, that our life is not the old man. Our life is Christ. Then it says that we were all made to drink of one spirit. See, that's what the life part. I'm baptized into his death, and I drink of one spirit. So whether we be Jews or Greeks, whether we be bond or free, we all drink out of one spirit. We're all raised in one body. Now you are the body of Christ. You're not the body of a Jew or the body of a Gentile anymore. You're the body of Christ. You don't find your life in being a Jew. You don't find your life in being a Gentile. You find your life in Christ Jesus. Whether According to the flesh, you are a Jew or a Gentile. It doesn't matter because this is a spiritual comprehension we come to in Christ, that in him, salvation is neither Jew nor Greek because at the cross, he crucified both Jew and Greek. <laughs> he, he put them both to death and he brought forth in himself a new man. And this new man is of spirit. So you and I are of spirit. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And we're joined to the Lord. We're baptized into the Lord. We're joined to him. Paul writes in Romans 6, in his death and his burial and his resurrection. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And this is how we come into the Father. 
is in his resurrection by him. By him. We come unto God by him, in him, through him. God has accepted us in the beloved. In the beloved. He never accepted us in ourselves. So Jesus' work is how we're accepted. We're accepted in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 24. Paul writes, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and fill up my part, that which is lacking of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. So there's his body, the church. Now you are the body of Christ. If you're the church, you're his body. You're the place he dwells, and you dwell in him. Now I'll rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and fill up my part, that which is lacking of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I was made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which was given me to you, Lord. So Paul had a dispensation of God that was given to the church or a ministry given to the church. So Paul's ministry was toward the church to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and generations, but now have been manifested to his saints. Catch this. Jesus said in John 14, I will manifest myself to you and not to the world. And of course, one of the disciples, Judas, not as scared, asked him, how are you going to do it? How are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And he said, my father and I shall come and make her abode it, uh, with you. Now get a hold of what Paul says here. He he says that he has been made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which was given to you work. So he has a, dis, a working of God that was given toward us to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which have been hid for ages and generations, but now hath it been manifested to his saints to whom God was pleased to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we proclaim, admonishing every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we might present every man perfect in Christ, whereunto I labor also striving according to his working, which worketh mightily in me, or worketh in me mightily. So Paul's ministry, just to break this down here in Colossians, was to fulfill the word of God. <laughs> and declare the riches of the mystery, and I believe this is the fulfillment, Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is what God was after, was Christ in you. That's what Jesus said. At that day, you will know I am in my Father, ye and me, and I in you. Hallelujah. So here, Paul's ministry is given to the church, to us, to know this. And this is how we approach God, according to Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So, being in Christ, Christ is in God. That's what he says. That day you'll know I am in my Father, I'm in God. 
you're in me and I'm in you. Do we understand that? And Paul says here that he wanted, he, he was going to proclaim, admonish every man and teach every man in all wisdom to present every man perfect in Christ. Now, when we say every man, I know we can take that and some people do and they say, well, that's every man. I believe there's access to this for every man, but I believe the every man he's talking to are those that are in Christ Jesus that have received the Lord. So he's dealing with the church. It's an epistle to believers, to the church of Jesus Christ. And it's to show you, you are complete. You've been made whole. As he is, so are you. See, many of God's dear children do not understand this. I've probably said this before. I, I can remember in my mind questioning God if I was right or not. And the reason I didn't know if I was right or not, I knew I'd received the Lord. In fact, I could feel the Lord. I could feel the presence of the Lord. And that would sometimes be the satisfaction of my soul that his spirit would bear witness with my spirit that I'm a child of God. And so it would bring this satisfaction in me that I'm his. But I would come many times to the Lord just asking the Lord, am I saved? Am I all right? Because I, I didn't comprehend being in Christ Jesus. I didn't see the work that Jesus brought me to himself that in his death, burial, and resurrection, when I received him, he literally brought me into himself. And that the coming of the Holy Spirit was to show me what he had done. That Jesus had, through his death, crucified me. I know he was the one crucified. I, I didn't hang on the tree at Calvary. But there... He brought this glorious death to me, that the things of the world, we, 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 we've sung a song that the threat, things of the Lord would go strangely dim. They do in the knowing of him because in his death, he died to the world. And in his burial, he was buried to it. He put it away. And in his resurrection, he come forth in new life. And all this was toward us that believe that we could be dead to the world. We could be put away from the world and that we could come forth in him. And see, that's how we have access to the father is in him. And it's so important to understand because our access to the Father is in him and as him. I'm not saying we're Jesus. I don't want anybody to misinterpret what I said. We are his body. So we're, we are members of him. <laughs> Paul, I'm, I'm going to read this again, what I read to you earlier. For even as the body is one and have many members... Our physical body has many members. And all the members of the body are one body. So, so all of these physical members, fingers, uh, fingernails, toes, and so forth are one body. They're one individual body. And they're many. But they're one body. And Paul writes, so is Christ. So is Christ. For also in one spirit, we all are baptized into one body. Whether we're Jews or Greeks, whether we're servants or free men, and in one spirit, we are made to drink. So we 
are one body or of one body in Christ. We're members in particular of the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body. The emphasis is the one. So also is Christ. So also is Christ. Now back what I said. So, uh, so we have access the, unto the Father in him, by him, through him, as him. As members of his body. Now, we're never going to be the head of the body. We're never going to be the Lord of the body. Because he's the head and he's the Lord. But we're members of his body. That's what John can write, as he is, so are we. Because this is what we belong to. This is the work of the cross that Jesus has brought us to himself. This is, this is what so many Christians are, are longing to understand, to be covered upon, to be, to be clothed with, is this understanding that you're his. You belong to him. You're in him. He's in you. These are not just words in your Bible. This is the reality of the work of the cross for you that have received Christ Jesus the Lord. This is not just a positional statement. Some people say, well, we're positionally in Christ. No, you are in Christ. You are in Christ. That's your salvation. And Christ is in you if, if indeed you have the spirit of Christ. <laughs> Paul tells us we belong to him. He means that. This was a reality of spirit that was in Paul's heart. He wasn't just writing something that, you know, from a positional standpoint, he was writing from a reality of the spirit of God that he had experienced. And that's what you and I should be writing from or, or speaking from. I should have said writing. We're not writing any more New Testament books. We might write books out of the reality of the New Testament in our heart. We might write, you know, literature out of the reality of Christ within us, but we're not writing a New Testament book. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, but the New Testament book is written in us. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the living God. So now we've come forth in Christ in the resurrection of the Lord to dwell in the presence of God. That's what we've done. That's our salvation. See, the high priest of the old covenant didn't bring them into the presence of God. I guess he did in type and shadow, but in reality, they were on the outside looking in. Our high priest has joined us to himself that as he is, so are we, that where he is, so are we. That's what he says. At that day, you'll know that I'm in you, you're in me, and I'm in God. And then in John 17, in John 17, he prays, That they all may be one, verse 21, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, and me. This is Jesus' prayer. So I believe it's true. Jesus prayed this. And, and there's something leaping in my heart that this is the true instance of the Lord. And this is the prayer I could say of the saints, Father, that we may be one. Or, or we can confess that, Father, we are one through the work of Christ. Jesus said that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also be one in us. 
that the world may believe that thou didst send me, or that they also in us may be one, that the world may believe that thou didst send me, and I, the glory that thou hast given to me, have given to them, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and thou in me. So here's our approach unto the Father. I in them, thou in me. Jesus said, he that has seen me has seen my Father also. So as we see him by the Spirit of God, we see what God is. <laughs> Honey, this is salvation. That God would receive you to himself in Christ Jesus the Lord. Goes on here in John 17 and says, that they may be perfected into one. And that the world may know that thou didst send me and did love them as thou hast loved me. One. Father, those whom thou hast given to me, I will that where I am, they also may be with me. See, that's what he said. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular of the body of Christ. Now you are his body. Oh, what a declaration we have that we've been joined to the Lord. He that is joined to the Lord, not he that's getting joined. Paul wrote, he that is joined to the Lord is, is now one spirit. My Lord, we've been joined to him. I, I, I've read the scripture that declares it. But now the reality of it must be made real in our hearts and our minds. We must receive it. Drink of his spirit. Glory to God. We're baptized into Christ Jesus. Hear that. Who oh, hallelujah. That as he died to the old man, we became dead. When he raised from the dead, when he was quickened by the spirit of God, we were quickened with him. That's our salvation. That's our born against experience. When we receive him, we're quickened. We're made alive in him. And see, that's what we don't understand. We are made alive in him. It's not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. We are members of one body. See, Christ. That liveth in me. We are members of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. There are those that question when someone passes away, where do they go? Well, if you're in Christ, that's a pretty easy answer. You continue to abide in Christ. Now, you're not seen in the earth, but you're not sitting in a grave somewhere waiting to live again. You're living in Christ. In fact, I believe you never lived before. I don't think we ever lived till we received him. I don't believe we fully get a hold of him saying, I'm the life. See, before the life come, we didn't have life. But now the life has come, and he is our life. He is our life. We are his body. That what he is could be made known in us. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Keep in mind Colossians chapter 1. 
that Paul declared his ministry was to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery that it had been hid from ages and generations, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and that he may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And then when you go to Colossians 3, Paul writes to the Colossians, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting or sitteth at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And we've been dealing with that. You are dead. Romans 6, you're dead with him. You are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. This is where your life's at, with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you appear with him in glory as one. Now, when you read this verse of scripture, consider chapter one. Christ in you, the hope of glory. When Christ, who is our life, Paul wrote, Christ is in you. So your life is in the soul. Christ is the life in the soul. When he appears, then you appear with him in glory. Father, glorify me with thine own self, with the glory that I have with thee before the world was. I don't know that that doesn't mean that we appear with him in the presence of God. <laughs> As one with him. As one with him. Well, these are things to search out, but he's our way unto the Father. He's our way unto the Father. In him is how we come unto God. We don't come unto God on, in ourselves. It's not I living, it's Christ living in me. He's our life. We come there in him. We're members of his body. That's what we are. We're made a part of Christ. Of his body. For him to express himself in, to make himself known. What a glorious mystery that is being revealed to us by the Spirit of God. That the eternal Christ of God would be made known in a people. That God himself would be made known. Not just like you looking and seeing God but that God himself would be revealed in our hearts, that the presence of the Son of God would make him known. Yes, yes, yes. This, honey, is salvation. Christ in you is salvation. Hallelujah. Well, we'll stop right here. We'll come back to it next week, and may the Lord Jesus Christ just richly bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.